Hello and welcome to part 8 and now we're back on the jolly old little Walkins farm here. But instead of saying goodnight to Jim Bob, we have to do some missions here. Yeah, but I like, I like this farm, I like, I like Bonnie. I like helping out here. Yeah, you know, you know, it's these type of missions where we're actually being a cowboy rather than a gunslinger. Head him up! Move him in! Hit him up with me and raw hide. No, babe, you want to stay away from the herd, man. It's a bunch of it's a bu bunch of sheeple, man. You need to be an ind individual. Hello, I'm here for a mission. Uh, fun fact: In the uh, TV show, uh, TV, uh, TV show, uh, TV show Deadwood, they actually deliberately have fuck and piss and actual swear words like we know today. And the thing is, that's that's not the type of swear words they used. I don't think so. But that's a deliberate stall choice because they would have used words like "one tarnation" or "one damnation," and that would have been shocking to them. So they did deliberately use the word fuck, so it's shocking to us. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. I can read the subtitles. Okay, so we have another herding mission, same as before, but uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, you know, tell tell them to hurry up, because really, I'm at their mercy when it comes to speed. The worse. What are you for? I'm working on it. I hate that in games when en when NPC is constantly berate you. You know, but it's not as bad as get up on the hydra's back. Get up on the hydra's back. Get up on the hydra's back. Get up on the hardest back, and you get the message. I would possibly do another rendition of a uh, Rawhide theme song, but I think you've heard more than enough of that. Oh, just. You see, this isn't too bad to play, but it's really hard to, uh, to uh, make interesting. And I like Bonnie. I. I guess she was introduced as an unrequited love. Or maybe they thought there weren't enough uh, female characters. Uh, speaking of which, I find that recent media, and this doesn't go for everything, but female characters can be annoying. Just on the basis, like, hear me out here, just on the basis, it's just that when a writer doesn't know what to do with a female character, they just make her feisty. You know, you know the, the sort of archetype you see in every movie. Where they make a, a female character feisty and she's witty, and can she, and she can give as good as her get, give as good she as good as she gets. And of course, uh, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't have a problem with strong female characters. It's just, it's just that writers, please, you can make, you can have a strong female character without making her sassy. You, don't, you know, sassy isn't the, the automatic route to making a good female character. I wish Stephen Moffat would realise that. But uh, speaking of which, speaking of Doctor Who, I have actually read two of the leaked scripts from uh, Series Eight, which I know sounds like a dick thing to do. You know, considering I do, I do actually say I am a fan of the franchise. You know, to you know, seeing a script is still pretty underhanded. But I I downloaded the, the five scripts, <laughs> the five scripts. Now that's a Doctor Who special, I, I don't really care about seeing, but I downloaded the five leaked scripts to see if, uh, to series 8. 
but I did it because I was wondering what kind of shell the, sh the shell would turn into if it, if it would get better and it definitely does it definitely seems like it gets better well, like saying that Moffitt, I, f I still think he needs to go. Not necessarily, not necess necessarily because I think I'm a hater, and I hate everything he does. Because you know, fans can really be divisive. You know, what's better, the Moffitt era or the Russell T David e Davis era? And I must say, they both have their issues. But, but but my point is, I'm trying to meander my way onto is that I think Stephen Moffitt should leave because I think the show needs a fresh, a fresh tone, a fresh. A take. Look, I read the script of the Deep Breath episode, the first one, and even if you didn't know, you could tell Stephen Moffat wrote it. So it's not a case of, I think his style I think his style's bad or he's fucking it up. I just think it's time for a change of style. It's time for a change of pace. But yet the 12th Doctor or 13th Doctor if you count the war Doctor it's going to be a great improvement, and and I feel sort of bad about saying that because I have nothing against Matt Smith. I think he did a great job as the Doctor. I just don't think they. He, he was just rough around the edges. Like the whole idea of the eleventh Doctor was he was supposed to be a man acting childish to to, to try and forget about his past before before he died. Because at that point he thought that was his last face, of course. But my point is that that whole characterization wasn't expressed well during his era. So what what, what I'm gonna say is the show does not look like it's going to improve. But it's not because Matt Smith left. So don't send any hate towards Matt Smith. I think he's gonna improve just because Moffitt has changed his atti attitude. You know, or you know, you, you could it does seem like the eleventh doctor was a transition doctor. From the Russell T. Davis era back to a more classic style Doctor Who, and you could argue maybe that that was the whole point. That that was the direction he 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 was always heading towards. And if that's true, I think uh, using Matt Smith as a transitional Doctor was a bit disrespectful towards him. But saying that, if we get a more you know a better Doctor Who at the at the end of it, that does make it slightly more forgivable. You know, Paul like Capaldi, he's gonna be a real bastard. I'll tell you that now, he's really he's gonna be a real bastard about Doctor Who. I mean a real bastard doctor. You know, and which you know, which is good. The doctor's you know the, the doctor has been difficult in the past. Ugh, so many missions. Oh now, now at this point there's, there's gonna be a, st a a storm cloud. As I saw if as I say eventually getting back to the game. There's going to be a thunderclap, and the 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 uh, cows are going to stampede. So I'm trying to make sure I'm st I'm slightly ahead of them. Or did, did that already happen? And I was talking over it. Oh, pff, I guess it was. <laughs> I'm so wrapped up in my Doctor Who rants, I forgot what else was going on. Twenty-one out of twenty-one uh, cattle. That's it, my little beef dumplings. Huh. Not a bad performance, even if I do say so myself. You saved the herd back there. You might make a decent rancher one day. Foreshadowing. Oh, that's a decent amount. Now, uh, that's the end of this part. Now, I don't do the optional missions in this playthrough, with the exception of one, and I do this one mainly because you can only do it as John Marston. Mainly because I do like the element to it. And see, what's weird about, weird about this game is that it, it, that it doesn't have a supernatural element. Or, it, or at least it won't until the DLC. So this mission is arguably a little bit out of place. Marston. Do I know you? I hope so. I seem to know you. I'm pretty good at remembering faces. Are you? Do you remember Hattie McCourt's face? Who? She 
There's a girl, Dutch Vanderlyn, shot in the head on that raid on the ferry a few years back. Same one you got shot on. Pretty girl. Until her eye was hanging out by a thread of tendon, and her brain was plastered over a wall. But, uh, you know, if you put a wig over that girl, it, it might, uh, it, she might look okay. What's your game, friend? I don't have a game, John. Listen, sometimes... I'm just a suspicious man in black. Who seems to know secrets about you. Nothing creepy about me at all. Ooh, you're such a gossip. See if you can advise him how best to proceed. What do you think I am? I know what you are, John. Just if you've got the time, friend. Yeah, if you could uh, stop that guy from cheating on his wife, that would be great. Yeah, we'll see this guy uh, at least two more times throughout the uh, playthrough here. Cut to Thieves Landing, because this part was already long enough. But uh, yeah, in these optional missions, you just follow the purple question mark. And it will lead you straight where you le need to the straight where you le need to go. Oh, now we get an optional choice here. I don't think it impacts on the story. But, uh, yeah, since I like to play John Marston as a redeemed man, I went for the uh, friendly option. Excuse me, mister. Yeah, what the hell do you want? Look, don't ask how, but I know what you're about to do. You don't want to do this. The hell are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you want, you want, you want to use a condom, buddy. I don't think you should go through with it. Your wife, she loves you. Yes, I'm grateful. Yes, you're right. I was raised better than this. Don't mention it. Now, what about the poor prostitute who's lost out on a uh, hour's work? An hour? <laughs> Who am I kidding? More like 15 minutes. Now, this is Thieves Landing. It's sort of a got Rogues Gallery. <laughs> rogues Gallery. It's sort of a place where you can play poker, do a bit of gambling. It's essentially like where all the thieves hang out. You know, it's called Thieves Landing, of course. Oh, the ammo clip. This will increase my ammo. The uh, ammo belt here. Or maybe John Marston is cosplaying as the War Doctor. There we go. Oh, I forgot what I've done. Oh, I remember what I do in this part. Now, in the old uh, Thieves Landing bit there, I bought a piece of fabric. So, wait, what, what am I doing? What are you doing here? Oh no, this is the tailors. This is where I, bought, I buy a piece of fabric. And this will unlock a costume. But uh, I just uh, picked up some medicine there. Because you never know when you might get in trouble. See, kids, this is what happens when you abandon a playthrough for months. And then you try to come back to it. How are you, friend? Yeah, that's the elegant coat fabric. Now, uh, Marston here does have a series of, of a different outfits he can wear. But to unlock some, you need to buy items or do certain tasks. So, uh, yep, that uh, elegant coat will enable me to... Uh, Change costume. Oh shit, a random encounter. There we go. Hehe, <laughs> thank you. It's okay, sweetie. His dead body is my reward. 
Yet yeah, randomly came to us. I have a hooker from my psychotic uh, bastard there. Now, if you change it into an outfit, you go home to a bed or a nearest uh, rest stop, and then you just uh, select it. And here we have it, the elegant suit. Which I think I'll keep on for a while here. It's a nice fancy suit. It's starting to look like the doctor here. Nice waistcoat, nice tie. And, uh, yeah, there you go. 